All right, in my experiments with this uh, scope, I have probably an hour's worth of experimental video showing me figuring out how to use it given the somewhat abbreviated instructions that come with the kit. And rather than make the viewers slog through all of those explorations, I've decided to scrap them and just recreate the essence of them hopefully in a much more abbreviated and direct fashion here, trying to be as succinct as possible. So I'm going to try to keep this view showing the top of the adjust knob so you can see when I'm working it. And uh, the... actually I'm going to zoom out just a hair. There we go. And uh, the controls and the display close enough that you can see what it's doing. So um, an overview we have the BNC connector right here and that's where the included test leads or a proper oscilloscope probe can be connected and then the test point for the output signal which you can use to either calibrate the unit or once you've done that you can use it as a place to clip the test lead on to to get some sort of a signal to display for demonstration purposes or just to verify that it's working. And then up here on the top, I'm not going to turn the unit to show it, is the three position switch for input coupling. Just like any other oscilloscope, it's AC, DC, and ground. And then down on the bottom, we have the power connector and the power switch. Everything else is here on the front panel. So I'm going to start by centering the vertical input and that should be done by holding the volts per division button down for a couple seconds and it'll say readjusting the vertical position. You'll see there's a pointer on the left hand side of the screen that indicates where the scope thinks zero volt is. So regardless of the vertical positioning it always shows you where zero volt point is in the signal and that's based on the data that's stored in the so-called capture buffer uh, which is where all the sample data comes into and is stored for display purposes. So the zero volt point may not always be centered and that's why that little arrow is there. Over on the right hand side is a pointer which indicates where the scope thinks the trigger point is and I should be able to hold down the trigger button and it reset it to zero volts. It says 0.00, .00 volts here and the pointer jumped to the zero volt line. So once I've done that, and by the way I should have done something which I didn't do, I'm going to do it now. Uh, you can't see the switch when you're operating the scope normally and meaning the DC AC coupling switch up here so it always shows the position of the switch right here so I'm in DC mode now I go, can go to ground and I can go to AC and it always shows me that so to center the vertical you really should have it in ground position first so I'll do that hold down the division volts per division and it realigned it and now I can take the switch and move it back to something like this and you should always use a scope in the DC mode as your first default. Uh, that allows you to see the true signal, not just the AC component of the signal. And normally that's what you want. But there are times when you don't want to look at the DC component of a signal. You just want to look at the part that's alternating or the AC component of the signal. In which case then you would use the AC coupling and it strips out any DC portion and just shows you the AC part. So that's for abnormal conditions. Normally you'd want it to be in the DC position or in ground if you just want to verify where ground is. But again, this pointer here should tell you that for most situations without having to constantly go back and forth like you would on an analog scope re-verifying your zero volt level. So having done that, um, Let's start out with the 
the basic control layout. So V div is for the vertical scale, in other words, going this way. And seconds per division is for the, the sweep. Now there isn't really a sweep here because it's not an analog scope, but I'm going to use that terminology anyway because it's just more convenient. So it deals with the horizontal aspect of the display. Trigger deals with triggering. In other words, when does the scope determine when it should start sampling data to show the waveform of a particular signal. And the control called label isn't really an OK even though that's what it's labeled for. I can't think of a single instance where you're asked a question and you need to respond with OK. So it's kind of a kludgy misnomer. It's used for several different things as I'll touch on during this uh, video. And then we have the adjust knob down here which is used to adjust any parameter that is currently highlighted or when no parameter is highlighted it allows you to change the positioning of the display. It's also a push button so you can push down on the adjust knob instead of just turning the knob and that has various functionality just like pushing these buttons so it's really a fifth button. So I'm going to turn my signal generator on now. I have this hooked up to a Siglent uh, digital uh, signal generator. I have it set up for 4 volts peak to peak and 1 kilohertz exactly. So I'm going to turn it on and we do get a display and I have it set up for sine wave. I could make it show a square wave or a ramp or a pulse or even an arbitrary waveform. But I'm going to do most of this with the sine wave. So let's do some basic scope work here. I can change the sensitivity, the vertical sensitivity, in other words how many volts per division is being displayed. And right now you can see there's a little blue box around the 1V or 1 volt. And notice that these prompts are always right over the buttons that go with them, so you're not hunting around. Um, since that's currently selected, all I have to do is turn the adjust knob. I need to recenter this a little bit. There we go. So I can turn the adjust knob. The smallest number you can get is 5 millivolts per division and then it's 10 millivolts, 20 millivolts, 50 millivolts, 0.1 volts, 0.2 volts, 0.5 volts, 1 volt, 2 volts, 5 volts, 10 volts, 20 volts, 50, and it doesn't actually go to 50, it stops at 20 volts. The maximum specified input voltage is 50 volts peak, which I presume means 100 volts peak to peak. But normally in electronics, you're not going to get, at least solid state electronics, you're not going to get signals that big anyway. So being able to measure 50 volts peak should be adequate for most needs. And then again, that's just uh, the, the overall span, the, the uh, vertical scaling cannot be adjusted higher than 20 volts per division. So let me crank it back down to 1 volt. By the way, it doesn't roll over. I can keep turning the encoder, the adjust knob, and it doesn't go beyond 20 volts and you can't roll it back over to the other end. I kind of wish it did, but then regular scopes don't allow that either. So. So let's just stay with one volt per division. Now, if I push this again, it takes away the highlight. But the scope remembers that the most recent thing we adjusted had to do with the vertical. So now the adjust knob is tied to vertical until I do something else. So I can do vertical positioning this way. I'm doing quite a few turns of the adjust knob to get it to move a little bit and that's allowing me to do fine positioning. If I find that that's tedious I want to 
make more rapid changes, all I have to do is tap the adjust button and look up in this space right here when I do it. There's a little double arrow symbol that appears. And when I do that, a relatively small amount of adjust knob rotation will have a bigger effect. Tapping the adjust button again removes that and now I'm back to the finer adjustment. Now you'll notice right now that this pointer is cyan in color and this pointer is magenta. If I go into uh, one volt per division sensitivity, in other words I've enabled sensitivity adjustment, this changes color to yellow. All that's telling me is that that parameter that's represented by the, the pointer is no longer adjustable. So if I turn the adjust knob now, it does not move. It's been deselected. Vertical position has been deselected. But if I cancel that, it goes back to cyan, which tells me that now it is coupled to the to the potential or to the adjust knob. So, uh, how do we figure this out here? Right now, I can go from this peak and go one, two, three, four divisions. I'm going to try to use my pen instead of my finger for some of this. So, one, two, three, four divisions from peak to peak. And at one volt per division, that's four volts peak to peak, which is exactly what my signal generator is putting out. So you can use the scope in the normal way to measure voltages and it's fairly precise. The, the accuracy is 12-bit accuracy, which isn't like a professional scope, but it's perfectly adequate for normal day-to-day -day measurements of signals. One more thing I can show here is Right up here is a message that can say running or it can say hold. Running is green, hold is red. And that can be actuated by pushing the OK button. It changes to the red word hold. All that means is that when it says it's holding, it's no longer sampling the input signal. And the signal could change. For example, I've turned off the input here coming from the uh, signal generator so the signal is still being shown which means it's not actively reading the input it's showing you some stored value uh, and that's what hold means it's just showing you the most recently captured data but it's not actively bringing in new data i can push the ok button again and now it's running again it's useful to be able to toggle hold mode on and off because there's always just a little bit of jitter uh, with the waveform. The time base on this is not absolutely rock solid and uh, you can get a little bit of horizontal jiggliness. It's not very much especially at the lower speeds but it's more noticeable as you go to faster scans or higher frequency signals and sometimes it's nice just to be able to hold it and avoid that jitter. It just stabilizes it. So I've got it back to here. And I should also mention that the scope will put itself in hold for various operations, but that can still be overridden by the operator pushing the OK button. So there's a few aspects of the horizontal time base that I'd like to go over here. First off, it's controlled by the seconds per division button and if I push that, it puts that highlight box around this number which tells you how many seconds or fractions of a second are represented by each horizontal grid position. Right now it's 0.2 milliseconds per division. And what does that mean to me? Well I can look at my display here and see that on this sine wave it goes from this point here through one complete cycle and back to here. 
and it takes one, two, three, four, five grid spaces or divisions for it to make that complete cycle. So to use this information to find the frequency of the signal, I take the 0.2 milliseconds and the fact that there is five divisions per cycle, and I start by entering 0.2 times 10 to the minus 3. That is scientific notation for 0.2 milliseconds. And I multiply that by the five divisions hit equal, and that is the period of the waveform. To turn it into the frequency of the waveform, all I have to do is push the reciprocal button and I get 1000, which is 1 kilohertz, and that is exactly what my signal generator is putting out. So that's how you can tell the frequency of a signal. Now that I've established my time base, I can go through all the options. I'll go down to the smallest one here, or the biggest one actually. 500 seconds, that's huge. 500 seconds per division. It can do some really slowly changing waveforms. And again, it doesn't roll over. Now go down from 500 to 200 seconds, 100 seconds, 50 seconds, 20 seconds, 10 seconds. 5 seconds, 2 seconds, 1 second, 0.5 seconds, 0.2 seconds, 0.1 second, 50 milliseconds, 20 milliseconds, 10 milliseconds, 5 milliseconds, 2 milliseconds, 1 millisecond, 0.5 milliseconds, 0.2 milliseconds, 0.1 milliseconds, 50 milli microseconds, 50 microseconds that is, 20 microseconds, 10 microseconds, and that's the smallest. Now I can go here, and back to 0.2 milliseconds, which is the required amount to get a couple of cycles on the display. Now there's uh, something else I can point out here, and that is this little bar graph at the top there is a capture buffer in here which is a piece of memory in the scope which records all the sample data and it's 1024 or uh, one kilobyte of data normally you're not going to be displaying all of that at once on the display it'll depend somewhat on the uh, the sample rate that you're getting from making this time base selection. So but it doesn't move much. It it stays pretty much in the same ballpark. But you have this overall bar graph here with a fat or thick portion in the middle. And if you envision the left side of this is being the beginning of that capture buffer and the right side is being the end of the capture buffer in other words 1024 sampled points later this thick part is representing this part of the display so now if I click my seconds division off it's no longer highlighted that means and by the way I don't know if you saw it or not but this part up here is this part up here is green but as soon as I deselect that meaning that I'm no longer going to be changing this value this part turns to cyan and what that means is that now when I turn the adjust knob that's the thing that's going to change let me uh, go into fast mode here by pushing the adjust button the icon has come up here now you can see that fat part moving to the right until it doesn't go anymore. Now I'm looking at the extreme right of the capture buffer's data. Now I'm looking at the very beginning of the capture buffer's data. And if you look close, you'll see right here where there's something that isn't a sine wave. 
that is the uh, small glitch that occurred at the beginning of the sample data. If I want to go back to the beginning or to the center of the data, which is probably a good place to be, just like I held down the voltage per division button to center the ground reference vertically, I can hold this down and it recentered it here. So I've covered the adjustability of the horizontal time base and horizontal positioning. Now while I'm doing this I can demonstrate another feature. If I hold down the OK button for a couple seconds it puts the display on hold and it shows some statistics here. It shows the frequency. It's on its own looked and found out that we're getting a nice regular sine wave so it's able to calculate the frequency based on the, vo uh, the time base and where the waveform repeats. It's intelligent enough to do that, but it won't do it perfectly on less regular waveforms. But now it is showing 1.000 kilohertz for the frequency. Uh, it shows the, the time per cycle as being 0.999 milliseconds. Um, that's one millisecond. Uh, there's PW there, and there's the duty cycle. It's showing 49.5% uh, duty cycle, which means that it's spending about half the time on, half the time off. That would make more sense if I was on a square wave. Now, it didn't change anything because it went to hold as soon as I turned on the measurements. I can, just like before, tap the OK button to put it into running mode. Now all the data gets a little jittery because it's constantly reacting to the input. It's going between 0.999 kilohertz and 1 kilohertz. That's why it's a little jittery. And it's flicking between 50% duty cycle and 49.5% duty cycle and a couple other variations of that. If I go to pulse, where it's not 50-50, all those parameters stay the same, but now it's saying that I have a 20% duty cycle. It's spending 20% of the cycle high, and then you can infer from that that 80% of the duty cycle it's spending low. Back to the sine wave. It shows the highest voltage that it's measuring relative to zero, and that's 2.06 volts. The lowest one it's reading is minus 2.06 volts, so the, the uh, centering is apparently right on. It shows you the average voltage, which of course with a nice 50% even sine wave should be zero, and it is zero. Voltage peak to peak is slightly over 4 volts. It's 4.13 volts, which is about what you'd get if you add 2.06 and 2.06. And then it calculates the root mean square, or RMS value of the voltage, as 1.41. So you get all those statistics there. I'm going to push and hold the OK button again. And the measurement's turned off. Doing that puts the scope back on hold, so I have to tap the OK button now to resume normal measurement. Now I've already talked about the running and hold status that's here. There's also another status at the upper right hand corner and that's going to say a couple of different things. For example it'll say waiting, it might say hold off, it might say trigged, which is short for triggered. Right now it's saying trigged, so that's simply telling us that while it's doing a constantly running scan and rescan and rescan uh, of the input signal that it is being triggered on a regular basis.
and I'll get into that a little bit more when I discuss triggering. So now we have different characteristics of the triggering that we can select and those are shown in magenta. Note that they do color code this pretty nicely. Everything associated with volts per division or the vertical axis is in yellow. Everything associated with the time base or horizontal axis is green and everything associated with the triggering is magenta. And that includes the normally yellow pointer for zero volts matching up with that and the magenta pointer for triggering level matching up with the triggering. And why isn't this part here green as it is here? And that's because it's cyan, which remember cyan on a adjustable parameter means that that's the thing you're going to change when you turn the adjust knob. If I push seconds per division again, now I'm not able to adjust this positioning here with the adjust knob, so it turns it to green, which is the color of the horizontal time base, so it shows that association. And by the way, that's why the box around this is cyan. I'd said blue before, but it's really cyan. And that again means whatever is cyan on here is the thing that's going to change when you turn the, the adjust knob. So again, pretty intuitive once you look at it for a little bit. And the color code is consistently implemented. So let's look at the triggering now. Just like with pretty much any oscilloscope, we have to look at the type of triggering and whether we're triggering based on an upward going slope or a positive signal or a falling slope or a falling signal. That's not always pertinent but it is a valid adjustment for triggering and you'll find it on pretty much any oscilloscope. And then finally we have the trigger level. If I looked at a regular oscilloscope you know, virtually any one that you could find, it'll have these three things that need to be adjusted for triggering. Let's look at the first one. So I push the trigger button and it gives me this cyan highlighting so we know that's what's going to change when I turn the adjust knob. There are three choices. There's auto, there's normal, and there's sing, which is short for single. I'll start with single trigger. So again, you have to think about the analogy of an analog scope here. That it used to be an electron beam that would just go from left to right, and it could either do that constantly, going from left to right, it would go from left to right blank, go back to the left and do it again and repeat, repeat, repeat. Or it could be set up so it just does it once and then stops and needs to be reset before it'll do it again. That's what single is for. It'll do a single sweep. Now, of course, because this is a digital scope, it doesn't really sweep. What it does instead is it does a capture. It samples 1,024 times and stores that in the capture buffer and then displays the values to get a waveform or some sort of a display. So whenever we trigger it here, it's going to do a single sweep or a filling of the capture buffer and then stop. And it's on hold, meaning that whatever you're seeing is not dynamic. It's whatever was captured previously. So that's single. Now if I go back here and select this again, now I turn it to normal. And what's normal mean? That's sort of misleading. This is um, what digital scope manufacturers have perversely decided to call this triggering function. Back in the analog scope days, it was often called by something a little more intuitive, which dealt with um, triggered sweep. So the earliest scopes did not have triggered sweep. They just constantly 
either did a single sweep or they would sweep over and over and over again at whatever rate that you selected by your seconds per division. And you would hope that you got a waveform that you could stabilize by making that adjustment. Uh, then later on they added triggered sweep, which meant that it would start a new sweep every time it was triggered. And by doing that, you'd get a more stable display of the waveform and get it more easily with less goofing around. And if the display changed, changed frequency for example, then it would keep up with that and keep the display stable. Whereas with the old system of just sweeping at a particular frequency, if you change the frequency of your signal that you're measuring, it would be drifting all over the display and require lots of adjustment. Anyway, on digital scopes, what they used to call triggered sweep is now called normal. So all it's saying is every time it does a sweep, or in this case a bunch of samples to fill the capture buffer, it requires a trigger to do that each and every time it does it. Finally, I can put it in auto, which is sort of a cross between the normal mode and the old free running mode. In this case it is free running, but it's still paying attention to the trigger. <laughs> Let's just say that it's the mode you're probably going to want to be in most of the time, but it's not always appropriate, so sometimes you want to go over to that normal mode. Right now I'm going to leave it in auto mode. Now if I push the trigger button again, it's going to go over and jump to normal running mode. I push the OK button to put it back in running because it was in hold. I go back to my trigger button again and now I can select the uh, rising and falling waveform as the type of triggering it's doing. We have a trigger level here as indicated by this magenta pointer and the readout for it says it's 0, 0.00 volts. So it's going to trigger every time the signal crosses the, uh, the 0 volt trigger level. But you can determine whether it triggers going past the trigger level going upwards or whether it triggers when the signal's falling downwards past the trigger level. And that's what this slope selection is. Most of the time you won't care, but sometimes it will be important, so you might want to select that. The knob here changes this, and you might not be able to see it easily, but basically it's showing a square signal as if it was a square wave with an arrow pointing down or pointing up, so it's saying I'm going to trigger as the signal is going up or I'm going to trigger as the signal is going down. Right now it's in the down position and um, as I change this you'll see the waveform flips upside down. And that just means at the very beginning when it started filling the capture buffer or doing its virtual sweep it was starting that when the sine wave passed the zero volt trigger point on its way going downwards. And if I flip it over this way, that meant at the very beginning it must have had the sine wave going up past the zero volt trigger level in order to start the sweep or the filling of the capture buffer. If I push the trigger button again, it goes back to allowing me to select auto, normal, or single. And if I push it again, it selects neither and it puts the cyan color on the trigger level. And all that's doing is telling me that's what I can adjust now. You can see the pointers going up here. And so is the number here. It's now 1.21 volts. So again, that's only telling us that as we move the trigger point, it's going to shift where it starts the sweep or the capturing of data, and therefore looking downstream, 
you know, way into the buffer as indicated by this bar graph, it's going to seem to be moving the, the trace left and right. Let's say that I've got the trigger way up here. If I hold down the trigger button for a couple seconds, it just moves it right back down to zero. It resets it to zero volts. So that's a pretty handy feature. So we've already seen that holding down the volt per division button reestablishes the zero voltage point at the middle of the vertical display. Holding down the seconds per division button centers the displayed waveform in the center of the capture buffer. And holding down the trigger button for a couple seconds resets the trigger level to zero volts. I've already covered the adjustment speed which again is toggled by just clicking the adjust button on and off and looking up here to see whether you're in fast adjust or or normal adjust. I can restore all the settings to their defaults by pushing the seconds per division and the trigger buttons together for a couple seconds. and it put it back to its default, which in this case isn't what I really want. So I'm going to push volts per, per division, and I'm going to select this back down. I'm going to go to seconds per division, and turn this to 0.2 milliseconds. Otherwise I was good with auto and a falling slope and a zero volt trigger. One thing that you may notice here is that the waveform is not centered vertically. I think that's a bug in the software. The ground level is still right here, so zero volts should be here. But let's, um, let's try that. Let's push down. Well, first we have to ground it. And you can see this is where it actually thinks ground is now. So I'm going to hold down the volts per division. It reestablishes it to this point. I can take it back out of ground. And now my waveform is vertically centered again. Now there's a feature which I haven't been able to get to work reliably on here. I think it may be a bug in the software. It's of marginal usage to me, but uh, let's say I'm going to go and get a nice sawtooth wave. If I hold down the adjust button and the seconds per division button, or rather the adjust knob and the seconds per division button, it said sending data for a, a couple seconds. Now I'm going to return to measuring a sine wave and I can see that it's doing that. But what if I wanted to recall that stored value? If I push the trigger button and the adjust button together, it didn't do it. That should have recalled that stored triangle wave to the screen. And sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. But whenever I do it, either momentarily or together, it misinterprets what I'm doing. So that feature does not seem to work reliably on here. I'm pretty sure I've gotten it to work, but I wasn't really sure why it did when it seemed to do it. So right now I'm going to have to uh, push down the seconds per division and the trigger which restores the defaults, take it out of hold, readjust the vertical sensitivity, readjust the horizontal time base, put the scope in ground, and push and hold the volts per division to realign it to ground, come back, and I'm back to my normal display. That's a lot of crap to go through <laughs> if you're just trying to recover from not being able to restore a stored waveform. So 
it's a nice idea, but it does not seem to work reliably, at least on this level of firmware that I have. If you buy one of these and you buy it later, which obviously you would if you haven't done it already, later than mine, maybe they fix that problem by now. So I've still got this one kilohertz wave being displayed, and I'm just toggling the seconds per division to get the scope thinking about horizontal position as indicated by the cyan pointer up here. I've reestablished the uh, troughs in my sine wave as being right on the grid. And I know it's 1 kilohertz. Now I'm going to go up to 100 kilohertz. Okay, I've got this signal that obviously is unstable. I'm going to select my time base and I'm going to go I can't go beyond 10 microseconds. What I'm going to do is push the OK button to freeze it. Okay. Then I'm going to deselect seconds per division so I can horizontally position this and it's showing one division between this negative trough and this negative trough or if I adjust it like this, one division between this positive peak and this positive peak. So one division at 10 microseconds. So I put in 10 times 10 to the it's microseconds, right? Yeah, so 6 minus 10, 10 times 10 to the minus 6, which is the same way as saying 10 microseconds. And it's just one division, so I don't need to multiply it by anything. And then I take the reciprocal, and it is showing 100,000. So it's agreeing with me that I've got a... 100 kilohertz signal, which is what my sig signal generator is putting out. So that's working, but you can already see that it's getting kind of hard to see any details of the waveform. You'd have a hard time determining whether it's a sine wave or a triangle wave, for example. Uh, obviously, if it's a square wave, you could pick that out. Oops, it's on hold. I have to take it off of hold. I'm now sending it a square wave. Does it look very square? No, and it's jumping all over the place. I'm giving a ramp. It's still... Is that, is that a triangle wave? What is it? There's a pulse wave form. You get something that's really hard to see what it is. And this is only 100 kilohertz. The specification for this scope says its analog bandwidth is 200 kilohertz. All that means is that the analog part of the circuitry can respond up to 200 kilohertz without changing, for example, its amplitude substantially through through uh, uh, capacitive reactance uh, uh, attenuation in the circuit, or just some other characteristic of the analog circuitry that can't respond to higher frequencies. And you'll see here that the divisions vertically is still about 4, and I am putting out 4 volts peak-to-peak, -peak, so it is establishing that the analog part of the scope is still showing the proper voltage without attenuation. But it's really hard to tell much of anything else about the waveform because I can't sample any faster. Now what if I go to 2 That's 200 kilohertz coming from my signal generator. And what do I have here? Maybe I can... Uh, 
go over here. I push the trigger button until my trigger pointer uh, turns cyan. I'm going to go here, and it's not helping me a whole lot. What if I go to normal? Doesn't make any difference. What if I push OK to hold it? Well, OK, at least I froze it, but look what it's giving me here. It's a very disturbed signal, um, and it is attenuated. It's not 4 volts peak-to-peak -peak anymore, even though the digital generator is putting that out. And if I compared it, as I have, to you know a high-end Tektronix scope that I have in my lab and a high-end Siglent digital scope, it's this that's lying. The, trigger, the signal generator is putting out the requisite 4 volts peak to peak. So we can see here that you can't believe what you're getting on the display here, nor can you really see it very well at 200 kilohertz. And it was already marginal at 100 kilohertz. Let me uh, put it back onto to running. And I'm going to change my horizontal time base here. You'll notice something here, right? Doesn't this look kind of odd? It says it's running. It's triggered. So it's 50 milliseconds per division. So I put in 50. 50 milliseconds times the 1.8 divisions that's 0 .09 and I'm going to take the reciprocal of that this tells me I have 11.11 .11 Hertz it's showing me a perfectly nice sine wave here just beautiful and it's saying it's 11.11 .11 hertz when I know it's 200 kilohertz. So this thing is flat out lying, right? Well, this is the kind of thing you get into when with digital scopes, if you're outside of certain parameter characteristics of the scope. It has to do with aliasing of the sample data and some other factors. And it's something you have to watch out for. And it's more prevalent on lower end scopes. You know, it's, it's the number of samples it can take. It's how often it takes the samples. It's the, the sample depth. It's all sorts of things. But I can go back here to this and crank it way up to the high end where it's starting to give me another waveform that's sort of stable. It's a little jouncy, but this is the one that's not lying to us. Now it's giving us the correct frequency. It's just unstable because the circuitry can't keep up with it. It can't sample fast enough to give us a reliable sine wave readout. It's basically sampling at too low a rate to satisfy the uh, the Nyquist-Shannon sampling theorem basically is what it is. And at that point you're going to get some bogus results. I, I won't go into this any further other than just to caution you that this scope here should not be used for uh, signals, measurement of signals that are anywhere near its specified range because that specification that only applies to the analog stage, not the rest of the scope, and there is no spec for the pertinent part of it. So a lot of people are going to misread that spec as thinking you can measure up to 200 kilohertz. You can't. As we've demonstrated here, you can get at least two points where you get a stable waveform, and the one that looks more stable is the one that's ridiculously incorrect. Now, I've gone to 50 kilohertz here on my scope. 
and I'm at 10 microseconds per division. Let's. I can't go anymore. I'm still at 10 microseconds per division, right? So I'm going to hold it for stability. I am getting the proper voltage input. I'm going to deselect that and make this part cyan so I know I can move it. Here I'm getting two cycles at 10 microseconds per division. So 10 microseconds times two divisions gives me this. Take the reciprocal and it's a nice steady 50 kilohertz. The scope is not lying to me in any way regarding voltage or time base and I'm getting a very close to obviously sine wave signal but this is the most I can stretch it out. I can't expand it more horizontally to get a better look at the wave shape. This could be still almost a, a, a sawtooth wave. It's just a little bit of distortion at the end that lets me know it isn't and that it's probably a sine wave. But this is only 50 kilohertz. What if I go down to 20 kilohertz? I have to take it off of hold here. Now I'm getting something where I can clearly see it's a sine wave, right? But if I go back, and again it's jittery so I'm going to put it on hold, I'm starting to lose the ability to tell what the waveform is. So even 50 kilohertz is pretty chancy. 100 kilohertz is useless. 200 kilohertz is a joke. So again, just a caution, I would strongly recommend that this scope not be used for much more than audio frequency ranges which is you know what a lot of people are going to be using it for frankly it's probably not much good for monitoring almost any modern digital circuit because frequencies will be much too high and um, you know you can't use it for radio type applications because again the frequencies will be way too high also, this is not a shielded design. If you get this unit in proximity to any kind of a, an RF frequency type signal or field around it, it doesn't have any shielding and you'll get all sorts of weird stuff happening. This is really for a nice <laughs> low frequency ambient environment, such as an experimenter's desk where they're working on relatively low frequency or audio frequency range analog signals. For that it works just beautifully. Uh, so there's one more thing I can cover here. I'm going to take it off of hold. And I want to see if I can get into the test signal mode. I know I can do it after booting, but I'm wondering if I can do it just while I'm running. So I'm going to try pushing the adjust button. One, two, okay I did get into it. The instructions make it sound like you need to reboot the scope before doing this, but I was able to get into it just by holding down the adjust button for three seconds. So now I just take my test clips and I go up to the test uh, test point on the top and clip the positive lead or the red lead. There's no need to connect the, the black lead to anything because it's a common ground. So um, I need to make some other adjustments. My time base is much too fast so I need to push the seconds per division and crank this way down Let's try here, 50 milliseconds, and let's change the vertical
oh no, it's not working correctly. You'll see here when I'm turning the adjust knob, it's changing the voltage and it's also changing the trigger level. So I'm going to power the scope off for a couple seconds. Power it back on, wait for it to reboot. I'm going to hold down the adjust button. One, two, three. Well, it's like it's trying to display something down here. I'm going to cycle the power again, and I'm going to connect my positive test lead. This is the way I've done it before. Turn the power back on. Wait for it to cycle through its uh, boot up. Push down and hold adjust button. Now that's curious. There we go. I should put this on AC. There we go. What I'm missing is the normal display here. That seems to be a little bit glitchy. I haven't noticed it not working in the past, but it's demonstrating itself to be a little irregular at this point. But I am getting a square wave out of the test point and uh, right now it's on one volt per division it's one well let's take that off and adjust it vertically so it's one two three and a third which is exactly what it should be if I'm on the 3.3 .3 volt output which it should be telling me but it isn't and I pushed adjust again here So I'm going to hold it down again for three seconds. Now I'm getting the display. 3.3. Let me try that again. There we go. Now I've got the 0.1 volt per division. But it's um, there. It, it is a little twitchy when it's in this test mode. I need it to turn the knob to adjust the position and to get it to resample even though I said it was running. Although it did say waiting before, so... There's your square wave. 50 millivolts per division. And now I'm going to push the uh, adjust button again. and I get a much bigger signal so I adjust the vertical sensitivity to get the square wave again and it is indicating 3.3 volts so it does work but this is not what I'd call the most highly developed part of this it seems to be a little twitchy on exactly which sequence you do things in to get it into this mode with everything working but that feature is in here